Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how Group 1 metals react with oxygen, chlorine and water. You should then be able to describe how the reactivity of the Group 1 metals changes as we move down the group. And finally, you should be able to explain the change in reactivity in terms of the outer electron. Now, this is a big topic, so I'm going to split this into two videos. In this video, we look at how Group 1 metals react with oxygen and with chlorine. In the next video, we look at how Group 1 metals react with water and see how we can explain the change in reactivity moving down the group. I'm showing you Group 1 here. Group 1 is called the alkali metals, and you could be asked that in your exam. All Group 1 metals have one electron in their outer energy level, and again, you need to learn that. We're going to start by looking at how Group 1 metals react with oxygen. I'm showing you here the element lithium, and I'm cutting this lithium with a scalpel. You can see that Group 1 metals are soft. Now, as soon as I expose some fresh lithium, it reacts rapidly with oxygen in the air. The lithium is forming the compound lithium oxide. We can see the equivalent reaction taking place with sodium here. Again, the sodium is reacting with oxygen in the air, forming the compound sodium oxide. You'll notice that sodium reacts more rapidly than lithium. Here I'm showing potassium reacting with oxygen in the air, forming the compound potassium oxide. Potassium reacts even more rapidly than sodium or lithium. So as we've seen, group 1 metals react rapidly with oxygen. And as we move down group 1, the metals react more rapidly. I'm showing you here an atom of lithium and an atom of oxygen. As you can see, lithium atoms have one outer electron, and oxygen atoms have six outer electrons. When lithium reacts with oxygen, the outer electron from the lithium atom moves to the oxygen atom like this. As you can see, the lithium atom now has a full outer energy level. However, the oxygen atom does not. Oxygen still requires one more electron. So another lithium atom now transfers its outer electron to oxygen like this. Now, both lithium atoms and the oxygen atom have a full outer energy level. At the end of this reaction, each lithium atom still has three positive protons in their nucleus. However, they only have two negative electrons, so these are now lithium ions with a positive one charge. The oxygen atom still has eight positive protons in its nucleus. However, oxygen now has ten negative electrons, so it's now an oxide ion with a negative two charge. We can write the equation for the reaction between lithium and oxygen like this. Remember that oxygen molecules contain two oxygen atoms. This means that we have to balance the equation by inserting large numbers, and here they are. We can write equivalent equations for other group 1 metals simply by changing the symbol for the metal. So here are the equations for sodium and potassium as well. Now, because all of the group 1 metals have one outer electron, they all react with oxygen in the same way. So as we've seen, group 1 metals react very rapidly with oxygen. Group 1 metals also react rapidly with chlorine, which is in group 7. This shows a lithium atom and a chlorine atom. When these react, the outer electron from the lithium atom moves onto the chlorine atom like this. This produces the one positive lithium ion and the one negative chloride ion. Both of these ions now have a full outer energy level, and we've made the compound lithium chloride. Here's the equation for the reaction between lithium and chlorine. Just like before, we can also write equations for sodium and potassium, and here they are. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.